He was once a man of Rohan, but over time he would come under the service of Saruman. During his years, he would manipulate King Theoden, meet wizards and Nazgul, and assist in the overthrow of the Shire. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life of Grima Wormtongue. Grima was born in Rohan at an unknown time in the late Third Age. The only thing we know of his early life is that his father's name was Galmod. Grima would come into the role of advisor of King Theoden. At some point, however, he would come into the service of the wizard Saruman. The fallen Maya promises Grima Eowyn in return for acting as his spy in Rohan. Early in the year 3014 of the Third Age, when Theoden is 66 years old, his health begins to fail. Since Rohirrim typically lived to their 80s, this could have been seen as due to natural causes. However, it is believed Theoden's decline was either induced or increased thanks to subtle poisons administered by Grima. These poisons are administered under the guise of being remedies for easing the effects of old age. While we will later see a bit of Grima's cunning during the War of the Ring, we learn of some of his early strategy in Unfinished Tales. We find that in addition to poisoning the king, Grima would also seek to poison his mind, specifically seeking to discredit Grima's chief opponents. If possible, he would get rid of them entirely. One such relationship he attempted to poison is that of Theodrid and Eomer. However, these two had been raised as brothers by Theoden, and they both had great love for the king. Unable to set the cousins against one another, Grima attempts to play the two against each other in Theoden's mind. He portrays Theodrid as a soft-hearted heir, and Eomer as power-hungry, and prone to acting without consulting the king. By the time of the War of the Ring, Grima's, and by extension Saruman's, hold on Theoden was quite strong. Theoden would seldom leave his house, and nearly all of the king's orders, whether to Hama, Elfhelm, or the Marshals of the Mark, came from Grima. Gandalf would later speak of Saruman's treachery and Grima's influence on the king. In those years, Wormtongue's task was easy, and all that you did was swiftly known in Isengard, for your land was open, and strangers came and went, and ever Wormtongue's whispering was in your ears, poisoning your thought, chilling your heart, weakening your limbs, while others watched and could do nothing, for your will was in his keeping. Speaking of Gandalf, he would come to Edoras long before his reunion with the Three Hunters. He escapes his imprisonment on the pinnacle of Orthanc with the help of Gwaihir the Windlord, who bears him to Rohan. Theoden bids Gandalf to take a horse and be gone, and Gandalf in turn takes Shadowfax, who bears him away to the Shire. Wormtongue in turn would make for Isengard, seeking to inform Saruman of Gandalf's arrival in Rohan. We later learn that Gandalf's warning to Theoden of Saruman's treachery is the first tear in the mask placed upon Theoden. And unfortunately for both Grima and Saruman, Wormtongue would meet other visitors on the road to Isengard, the Nazgul. In that hour, the Wormtongue came near to death by terror, but being inured to treachery, he would have told all that he knew under less threat. Yea, yea, verily, I can tell you, Lord, he said. I have overheard their speech together in Isengard. The land of the halflings, it was thence that Gandalf came, and desires to return. He seeks now only a horse. Spare me. I speak as swiftly as I may. West through the gap of Rohan yonder, and then north and a little west, until the next great river bars the way. The Grey Flood, it is called. Thence from the crossing at Tharbad, the old road will lead you to the borders. The Shire, they call it. Yea, verily, Saruman knows of it. Goods came to him from that land down the road. Spare me, Lord. Indeed, I will say naught of our meeting to any that live. Thus, Saruman's treachery toward Theoden and Sauron is known to each. The Witch King would indeed spare Wormtongue's life, but not out of pity. He knew that so great a terror was on Grima that he would never speak a word of this encounter to Saruman or any other. And the Witch King rode on to seek the Shire, not bothering to revisit Isengard, for Sauron's vengeance toward Saruman could wait. Contrary to Grima's lies about the prince, Theodrid was anything but soft-hearted, and it is he who goes without orders to combat the threat of Saruman 
as the wizard seeks to invade Rohan. He takes a large group of riders to the West Fold to resist the invasion early the following year. Unfortunately, Theodred's bravery and loyalty to Rohan work to Saruman's benefit. The wizard sends out forces from Isengard on February 25th, meeting the Rohirrim in the first battle of the Fords of Isen. This attack was not to win the crossing or begin his invasion. Its sole purpose was to kill Theodred at all costs. In the end, several hundred Rohirrim perished. Hundreds more orcs and Dunlendings are slain. And as Saruman wished, Theodred is killed. As Gandalf later explains, after Theodred's death, Wormtongue played dangerously, seeking to delay Theoden's efforts and prevent Rohan's full strength being gathered. He aims to send as many men as possible on a wild goose chase north and convinces Theoden to forbid Eomer pursuing the orcs raiding across Rohan. If Eomer had not defied Wormtongue's voice speaking with your mouth, those orcs would have reached Isengard by now, bearing a great prize. Not indeed the prize that Saruman desires above all else. Though his actions would save Merry and Pippin, and thereby shape the fortunes of the very war, Eomer is imprisoned in Edoras for disobeying the king's orders. All would change, however, with the arrival of Gandalf the White and the Three Hunters on March 2nd, 3019, one week after Theodred's death. After turning over their weapons, they are permitted entry into the Golden Hall of Meduseld, where they would meet a decrepit King Theoden. Slowly, the old man rose to his feet, leaning heavily upon a short black staff with a handle of white bone. I greet you, he said, and maybe you look for welcome, but truth to tell, your welcome is doubtful here, Master Gandalf. You have ever been a herald of woe. Here you come again, and with you come evils worse than before, as might be expected. Why should I welcome you, Gandalf Stormcrow? Tell me that. Slowly he sat down again in his chair. You speak justly, Lord, said the pale man sitting upon the steps of the dais. It has not yet been five days since the bitter tidings came that Theodred, your son, was slain upon the West Marches. In Eomer there is little trust. Few men would be left to guard your walls if he had been allowed to rule. And even now we learn from Gondor that the Dark Lord is stirring in the east. Such is the hour which this wanderer chooses to return. Why indeed should we welcome you, Master Stormcrow? You are held wise, my friend Wormtongue, said Gandalf in a soft voice. Yet in two ways may a man come with evil tidings. He may be a worker of evil, or he may be such as leaves well alone, and comes only to bring aid in time of need. That is so, said Wormtongue, but there is a third kind. Pickers of bones, carrion fowl that grow fat on war. What aid have you ever brought, Stormcrow? And what aid do you bring now? It was aid from us that you sought last time that you were here. Then my lord bade you choose any horse that you would and be gone. And to the wonder of all, you took shadow facts in your insolence. My lord was sorely grieved. Yet to some it seemed that to speed you from the land, the price was not too great. I guess that it is likely to turn out the same once more. You will seek aid rather than render it. Do you bring men? Do you bring horses, swords, spears? That I would call aid. That is our present need. But who are these that follow your tail? Three ragged wanderers and grey, and you yourself the most beggar-like of the four. The courtesy of your hall is somewhat lessened of late, Theoden son of Thingel, said Gandalf. Has not the messenger from your gate reported the names of my companions? Seldom has any lord of Rohan received three such guests. Weapons they have laid at your doors that are worth many a mortal man, even the mightiest. Wormtongue seeks to discredit Gandalf, but the wizard is simply too great and would heal Theoden of Grima's influence. Suddenly Gandalf changed. Casting his tattered cloak aside, he stood up and leaned no longer on his staff, and he spoke in a clear, cold voice. The wise speak only of what they know, Grima, son of Gamord. A witless worm have you become. Therefore be silent and keep your forked tongue behind your teeth. 
I have not passed through fire and death to bandy crooked words with a serving man till the lightning falls. He raised his staff. There was a roll of thunder. The sunlight was blotted out from the eastern windows. The whole hall became suddenly dark as night. Only Gandalf could be seen, standing white and tall before the blackened hearth. In the gloom, they heard the hiss of Wormtongue's voice. Did I not counsel you, Lord, to forbid his staff? That fool Hammer has betrayed us. There was a flash as if lightning had cloven the roof. Wormtongue sprawled on his face. Now, Theoden, son of Thingel, will you hearken to me? said Gandalf. Do you ask for help? He lifted his staff and pointed to a high window. There the darkness seemed to clear, and through the opening could be seen, high and far, a patch of shining sky. Not all is dark. Take courage, Lord of the Mark, for better help you will not find. No counsel have I to give to those that despair, yet counsel I could give and words I could speak to you. Will you hear them? I bid you come out before your doors and look abroad. Too long have you sat in shadows and trusted to twisted tales and crooked promptings. As Theoden is restored anew, Eomer is freed from his imprisonment. Upon his command, guards go to search Grima's quarters for Theoden's sword, Herogrim. They would find the sword, along with many things which men had missed. When Grima pleads with Theoden to send him not from his side, Theoden gives him that exact option. He may stay by the king's side and ride with him into battle against the forces of Isengard, or he may choose exile. Grima opts for exile, and he makes his way from Edoras to Orthanc. Grima arrives the morning of March 5th to find Isengard sacked by the Ents. While Saruman's army had been sent out earlier and would meet the Rohirrim at Helm's Deep, his much smaller force left to defend Isengard is completely destroyed. Grima attempts to convince Treebeard he is a messenger from Theoden, but Treebeard had already met with Gandalf and knew of his treachery. Grima is allowed to join his master in the Tower of Orthanc. Later that same day, Gandalf, Theoden, and their victorious party arrive at Orthanc to parley with Saruman. Following the confrontation between Gandalf and Saruman, during which the latter's staff is broken, Grima throws a heavy rock out of an upper window of Orthanc. Aragorn tells Gandalf that perhaps Grima's aim was poor because he couldn't decide who he hated more, Gandalf or Saruman. Saruman would punish Grima severely for this act, for it was not a mere heavy rock he had thrown, but the Palantir. Saruman and Grima would be held captive in the Tower of Orthanc for the next five months. During this time, Grima would become weak and thin as he is mistreated by Saruman. Feeling pity for living creatures held in captivity, Treebeard allows them to leave on August 15, 3019. The pair head northwest on foot, and as they are on their journey, they're overtaken on the road by Gandalf, Celeborn, Galadriel, Elrond, and the Hobbits on August 28th. Saruman and Grima have been reduced at this point to traveling beggars, and during their conversation with our heroes, Saruman kicks Grima and threatens to not give him any scraps for dinner. When Grima murmurs how much he hates Saruman and wishes to be free of him, Gandalf urges him to do just that. However, Grima instead hides behind Saruman, and they part ways with the company, heading toward the Shire. Unbeknownst to the hobbits, Saruman had long been seizing control of the Shire from afar. He used his ruffians and orchestrated the rise to power of Lotho Sackville Baggins as his puppet. Saruman himself would come to control the Shire, becoming known as Sharky. Over the coming two months, Grima would become even more decrepit and miserable. He's almost beast-like, reduced to a crawling wretch. Saruman even shortens his name to Worm, in derision of his disgraced servant. Sometime during this two-month span, Wormtongue murders Lotho Sackville Baggins, for Saruman no longer needed his puppet ruler of the Shire. Saruman's reign over both the Shire and Wormtongue would come to an end on November 3rd, as Merry, Pippin, Frodo, and Sam finally return to the Shire. After Saruman is revealed and told to leave the Shire forever, Frodo tells Wormtongue he may stay, have food and rest, then be on his way, free of Saruman. But Saruman replies, Worm killed your chief. Poor little fellow, your nice little boss. 
didn't you, Worm? Stabbed him in his sleep, I believe. Buried him, I hope. Though Worm has been very hungry lately. No, Worm is not really nice. You had better leave him to me. A look of wild hatred came into Wormtongue's red eyes. You told me to. You made me do it, he hissed. Saruman laughed. You do what Sharky says always, don't you, Worm? Well, now he says follow. He kicked Wormtongue in the face as he groveled and turned and made off. But at that, something snapped. Suddenly, Wormtongue rose up, drawing a hidden knife. And then with a snarl like a dog, he sprang on Saruman's back jerked his head back, cut his throat, and with a yell ran off down the lane. Before Frodo could recover or speak a word, three hobbit bows twanged and Wormtongue fell dead. Thus the unhappy life of Grima Wormtongue ends in the Shire, alongside his ill-chosen and abusive master. Grima would be remembered for his folly, for so long being unable to throw off the control of Saruman, and for being the final casualty of the War of the Ring. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Kella Brimbor, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, Toby Mobs Music, CCDC Red Team, Nerd Sigman Anytimer, Pelkey Sports Cards, Moki the Brown, Christopher Carbaugh, Joe Tepper, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, Grant McGregor, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.